I'm just going to get going and, and we're going to do things in a special order this time. So let me see, are there any people who have just recently adopted a tortoise? Any new folks here? Oh, uh, these folks have a brand new hatchling. <laughs> and this young lady here called because she, wants, she wanted to put in a habitat at her school, Sandy Miller. But as you may or may not know, it doesn't work out very well at schools long term. People are really excited about it when they're there, and the principal's excited, and a couple of teachers, and then you know what happens in this school district, they all get transferred. And pretty soon then the tortoise habitat kind of falls apart, and then the people from grounds come in and decide to put in a new sprinkler system and they flood the borough and it's just been pretty much a nightmare at most of our schools. So if you hear that people are wanting to do that, let them know about that problem, will you? What we suggest is people uh, get a tortoise themselves and then bring it into the school and uh, show it off, give a good presentation and take it back home where it'll be happy. So nobody else with a new tortoise? Well, fooey. I do want to remind you to separate a breeding pair and not to take on a whole bunch of new tortoises, which is not legal anymore, because it'll run into trouble. It's going to be trouble at your house, and you are limited to one now. Now, I want to ask for help. Did, did anyone here work at the Mega Dive Bagging? Remember what fun that was? Well, I need someone to help me with the organization. So if that organization is your kind of thing, uh, would you please see me about the next one so someone else can learn how to do it? Because I'm, you know, kind of pooping out here. We have a new mega diet seller, Cheryl Moody. I don't see Cheryl. She lives in Southern Highlands at Silverado Ranch and Dean Martin. So if you live in that area, her address, her phone number is on the website and it's also in our newsletter that you can pick up over there. By the way, we're back to our wonderful newsletter printer, Mark Martin, who's now with Rapid Color. And uh, we're still looking for a bilingual speaker, Spanish English who can help us with yard visits, and also we're going to be doing our care booklet in Spanish. So we really need to have a couple of people to assist us with our Spanish-speaking community. Any takers? Any Spanish speakers? Oh, look at that! The wonders of electronics. Just a minute. Why don't I do my session, and then we'll go back to yours while we're at it. So I want to tell you some more exciting things. We've also left our current office space, and you probably saw the email that we were looking for um, a place that somebody could donate to us. So if you know somebody, or if you yourself have a place, or you know somebody who might be able to give us a location, get hold of Jim, please. Now, we have a couple of things that we're <clears throat> using as fundraisers. We, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the change in our structure later on, but we're going to be doing fundraisers, asking for your help and support, but we've got fun things going. We have Linda Lundgren over here, Linda, who was so excited about selling chocolate that she said, I want to do this. I want to make money for Tortoise Group, which is a fine idea, I might add. And so she wanted to do it by selling C's chocolates or candy bars. And so those are available over here. Linda, they're, they're a dollar for, for the suckers and two dollars for candy bars, correct? So get as many as you'd like. And then Nancy Thompson Jones has these lovely little torty statues that are $15. And uh, she, she bought them out. <laughs> Marilyn bought one. There are four left. They're $15. We also have the DVD made by our founder, Betty Burge, on 
the second part of our series, How a Tortoise Works. It's called Hatchlings to Hibernation. And I review it every year because it's so, I can't remember all the things that, that she's forgotten even, you know. Oh well, she's not with us. Uh-oh, Beckett is leaving. I want to introduce you to Liz Cornell. We didn't know when we got Jim that we got a twofer. Liz is a very advanced vet tech. She is the woman who organized the sterilization clinic. She was in charge of all the vet techs and the volunteers and getting everything going and ordering all the materials. And this is the little one. <laughs> who's not enjoying this as much as the rest of us. So we're just bouncing around a little bit. But the DVDs um, that Betty produced, this one is available back here, $10 for members, 12 for non-members. And it's something you're gonna wanna have in your collection, I'm sure. Now, I'd like to introduce Dominique Walton. Where are you hiding, Dominique? There you are, she's not hiding at all. She's in right in the front. And Dominique wants to tell you a little bit more about our Color Me Mind fundraiser. Hi, um, not tomorrow, but the next Sunday we're having a little gathering for, okay. Not tomorrow Sunday, but the next week we're having a gathering for all you tortoise folks uh, at Color Me Mine in Henderson over at the district. And they have a nice little program there where we'll be able to pay the usual studio fee and pick your bits to paint, but they're going to give the proceeds to Tortoise Group. So the, giving the proceeds to Tortoise Group is going to help us out quite a bit. We also have a gift card raffle that will be taking place. We've been taking donations from restaurants for gift cards to so be able to put in a few bucks and see if you can win a prize. And it's all to help Tortoise Group and help us get together and we can discuss tortoises, find out what each other's doing, and get ready for a brumation. Thank you, Dominique. And to sign up, you're going to send out another email, right? And you'll just be able to click on that and sign up. Or if you don't want to come but you'd like to give a donation, you can do that as well. Um, so that's what we're doing with all those things. And now let me turn you over to our executive director, Mr. James Cornall. James, the son, something must be wrong. <laughs> That usually happens when I go to the bank and I sign Jim, and they say, but it says James on your card. <laughs> so some people don't know that Jim and James are the same thing, I guess. Is this on? Yeah. OK, it is. Everybody here OK? So now that we're totally out of order, I apologize for all of the technical difficulties at the beginning. Hopefully, we can get back on track again. And we're, we're all out of order with the slides, but that's OK. Um, great crowd today as well. It's good to see everybody here. Is there anybody here that hasn't been before? Oh, a few. All right. Well, if you do have any questions, make sure that you ask either Kathy or Janina, who is the adoption coordinator, or if you're really desperate, myself, for uh, any answers to any questions you may have. Um, Mike Sin was supposed to be with us today from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to talk about the sterilization clinic, but... Uh, he said he might be able to get here, he might not, and as of right now, it's might not. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll keep going with some of the things that I know it's a really busy meeting today, so I'll try and whistle through all the things that have been happening over the last month. Seems like it was about five days since we had a meeting, and I was going through the slides thinking, did we already say that? Did we already do that last month? But I think hopefully we've got things that we haven't said at the last meeting. Um, we were up in northern Nevada again, at the beginning of September, we held meetings in Reno, Carson City, and Fallon, and we did 11 adoptions, four of them on the drive up, which was kind of hectic. And uh, what was even more hectic was we, we had a television interview to do at 7 o'clock at night, and uh, we had to time it, and we got there with about six minutes to spare, doing four adoptions on the way. Two, uh, two of them we did by the side of the road at the uh, smoke shop in uh, somewhere in Shirts. And um, we did one in Hawthorne, and it, was, it looked kind of shady. People were wondering what we were doing. It was a, a really illegal transaction with two tortoises by the side of the road. But we got the adoptions done and uh, met lots of great people, as we always do up there. And, and we're 
hopefully. We won't be doing any more reductions out there this year. So we also competed with the balloon festival. So um, there was a lot of people around and lots of balloons. And we, we didn't go. It was 4 o'clock in the morning when they did all the balloon launches. So it's a little bit early for us. Uh, as far as media is concerned, we've had a lot of coverage lately. Uh, Pahrump, Reno, Las Vegas, Pakistan, believe it or not. We actually got some coverage in Pakistan in the Pakistan Daily Times. And that was for the sterilization clinic. Most of it was for the sterilization clinic. So we made USA Today, we made uh, Channel 8, we made Channel 2. That was the interview that we had to be up in Reno at 7 o'clock for and that we just made. So lots of good coverage for all of the things that we've been doing, the Northern Nevada adoptions and also the sterilization clinic, which is the, the one that's pretty much taken up our entire month. The clinic was on the 27th and 28th of August. However, anybody that was here that was involved will know that it started way, way, way before that for Tortoise Group. On the 17th, we started by doing um, a lot of health examinations on tortoises that were going to be used for the clinic. And we had to do those in two or three different places. Uh, we had about 20 volunteers came out, there's maybe 21. Um, 21 volunteers came out, put in about 400 hours of, of work for this, for this clinic. So it was amazing to see the amount of work that people did, and we are so grateful. And I know that Mike wanted to come out and tell everybody how grateful Fish and Wildlife Service were for the work that was done by Tortoise Group volunteers. And we received lots of great compliments from Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, and now Nevada Department of Wildlife, and from everybody that was involved was just the, the lead vet, Steve Divers from the University of Georgia, extremely complimentary about all of the things that Tortoise Group did in working for this clinic. So he thanked us, and, and I'm thanking everybody now, and, and also the people that aren't here, because it was just it was a great event, and everybody was just amazing. <coughs> Um, for the clinic itself, on the 27th and the 28th, we had vets from Arizona, Texas, Utah, Nevada, and California come to learn how to do new sterilization techniques. Um, after the health assessments, of course, we had to go and collect all of these tortoises from different places. We moved around 70 of them to the Equendo Center. And we also were responsible for the pre-op care, so that meant giving lots of injections and when you walked into the clinic, all you saw was totes with tortoises in them, and there were stickers on every every tote saying what the number was, the microchip number, whether it was male, female, what meds it had just had, whether it had whether it had uh, pooped and peed, all of these things that were important for the for the uh, operations that were going on. So it was just I say it was chaos, but everybody knew exactly which tortoise was which, and you only had to ask a volunteer which tortoise was which, and they could go and grab it, and they knew exactly what was going on. So, uh, again, it was a it was a great time and a great job for uh, for all of the vets, all of whom learned a lot. Many of whom are now able to put the sterilization techniques into their own clinics. So we now have an option for being able to do sterilizations of pet tortoises. And, and it all stems back from something that we've been talking about at lots of meetings about how there are way too many tortoises due to backyard breeding. And some of the tortoises came from one of those backyards. And we had, um, we had about 70 tortoises that, that operations were done on. Some of them were a little too small to do the sterilization, so they went in and determined whether they were male or female, but they didn't necessarily do the operations. Yeah, the vet list of, of the has just been updated on the website. We also have some of the sheets here as well today, that, and, it, and it tells you who does sterilizations, who do who does microchipping, and there's some of the uh, the vets in action doing a endoscopic procedure, and there's the post-op care. Uh, anybody again that was that, that worked on this, you, you walked into the room and there were people pushing on legs to try and get the circulation going again, and it was um, it was quite quite nice to see all of these tortoises coming around after their operations. These are some of the tinier ones. 
some of the big ones didn't actually fail on that table. They were <laughs> it was quite the quite the operation. But again, they they managed to pull through. And it wasn't just the fact that they're doing all of this this post-op care while they were reviving these. There were more going in, so it was this conveyor belt of tortoises going to be sterilized, tortoises being um, anesthetized, and tortoises coming out of anesthetic. So. It was it was busy, and a lot, lots of the volunteers that were there were there for many hours. Uh, before I go on to that, we, Mike and, and I did plan um, plan to give out some little um, thank yous as mementos of people that volunteered at the clinic. What's that? Well, maybe we should leave that till later, just in case Mike does actually show up. We'll uh, we'll do those after the after the break. What's that? How did all the tortoises do? Uh, how did they do? We had a couple that didn't do so well. Um, but one of the th one of the things that we found were a lot of the tortoises that came from the backyard had pathologies. So whether it was the conditions that they're living in, whether it's because this potentially inbreeding happened, so those, some of those weren't in that great a condition, so they had to abandon two or three of the operations. So. Um, but other than, other than the three that, that were in rough shape, uh, the other 67, I think they did, there were seven that they didn't operate on because they were too small. And then there were 60 that, were, that had the, the sterilization performed on them. And so, yeah, and some, some of those are already adopted in Northern Nevada. So that, that weekend, Janina and I headed up with some of the sterilized tortoises up to Northern Nevada, and some of them have been adopted out here since. And some are still at the, the backyard that they came out of, some are at the DTCC. And we're trying to adopt out as many of them as we can, which links nicely into the next slide. Uh, we received almost a $5,000 grant from PetSmart Charities to help out with the adoptions. And this was for an emergency. Now, they define an emergency as when you have 50 or more pets that need uh, need some kind of help. And they see this all the time with cats and dogs, that somebody's a cat hoarder or a dog breeder and they get taken away from them and all of a sudden there's a huge issue because they have to deal with 50 uh, dogs. Now, this was something that Dominique found online and I followed up with and called PetSmart Charities, talked to them and they said, we can't do that because we, we only, we can't do anything that includes labor travel, transportation, we can't fund anything like that. So I explained the situation, how we had 50 tortoises from a backyard that we were trying to find homes for, and the only way that we could do that, we, what we wanted to do was to try and build burrows for people that couldn't afford them, um, that really wanted to adopt a tortoise, but couldn't afford the several hundred dollars that it might cost to build a burrow. So um, she thought about it for a while and said, well, we've never done tortoises before. And, uh, but it still doesn't qualify. And then I called her again the next day, and she said, well, um, she said, you know, I really like this story. I think it's a great story. I'm going to personally take it before the board of directors tomorrow morning and see if we can get you the funding. And the maximum funding that they give is $5,000 per incident. So, and, and I didn't quite ask for that. I asked for about just over 4000 And uh, she called me the next day and said, they went for it, and you're getting pretty much the maximum amount. So we, we're now able to do some. Um, some habitats for people. We did the first two last week. Um, so we have two people already that have tortoises thanks to this grant. I think there are just two or three coming up this week. There's another three coming up this week. And we figure that we can get about 10 or 11 of the tortoises that came from the sterilization clinic into homes before the end of the season before hibernation. So we're hopeful that we'll get 11 done and that we'll get them out and into these new burrows, and the excitement for the people that we went to drop tortoises off on Thursday, it was just wonderful to see these people that really wanted a tortoise and were quite happy to pay the adoption fee, but just couldn't afford the the, uh, the burrow bill. So we were really happy to help out with that, and I'm writing some more media releases to go out around this, so hopefully we'll get some more coverage, but it's, and we're hoping that this is just the beginning of lots more funding. Is that me? No. Oh, okay. We, we both have the same ringtone. OK, 
kept getting a, a vibration in my pocket that kept telling me that the Las Vegas 51s was close close to where we, we are. I don't know what, whether that whether that was relevant or not. I think the season's over now, but they kept telling me that the Las Vegas 51s are, are real close. Um, on a social media front, we are on Facebook and we are trying to update that on a frequent basis. We'll be going with as many of the um, the, the, the new social media programs as we possibly can over the coming weeks and months. So if you are a Facebook person, please follow us on, on Facebook and uh, contribute as well, ask questions. And again, if I can't answer them, then I'll call Kathy or Janina and they will be able to. And we can post some neat stuff. It's good for just people getting together and, and saying hello. And, and if I find some interesting news clips, such as um, some of the things that have been happening lately with desert tortoises, um, then I post those on there as well, because some of them are kind of interesting. Some of them are funny as well. And now I guess it's back to uh, Kathy's little rest is over. It's yeah, time for the annual good. meeting. However, go this way before. Is this one off or on? Is that on? Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of fairs coming up. We're going to be going to several events uh, in the, this fall. And so I'd like to uh, ask for volunteers to staff our booths. I know a lot of you have been trained. And uh, it's great to see all of you here. We're uh, going to do the, let me see. Get Outdoors Nevada Day on October 25th. That's at that beautiful new Craig Ranch up on Craig Ranch Park up on Craig Road. And uh, on November 1st and 2nd, the Las Vegas Reptile Expo. So we're going to be there two full days. We need four people, I think, for the Get Outdoors Nevada Day, two shifts. But we need to cover two full days for the reptile thing. So I'm going to pass these around. November 1st and 2nd. And so if you think you might be interested, not for sure, you absolutely have to, but you might, would you please put your name down and then we'll call you later about times. So would you put one on either side and see if we can get those going. Thank you. And um, you don't have to know everything, but it's a good chance to, to learn some things because we'll We'll always pair people up. If someone's a little bit new to it, then we'll pair them up with somebody who's been to a lot of things. So now, the annual meeting, which I always promise will be brief. So this is our one time of the year when we have an official meeting. So I'm calling the meeting to order at um, 1.20 something, eight. And I'd like to begin by calling on our secretary, Laura Deitch, to read the minutes of last year's meeting. Hi, I'm probably not excuse me, a familiar face to a lot of people, but I've been around a while. It's nice to see some old faces that I haven't seen in a long time and nice to meet new people. And I have to make a plug for the popsicles because they're going to melt. So they're in the sink in the back behind their freshman's table. There's mango, coconut, lime, and strawberry. So go grab a popsicle if you want one. So I'm going to read the annual minutes. Tortoise Group Annual Meeting 2013 happened on September 28, 2013. The meeting was called to order by Chairperson Kathy Utiger at 1.13 p.m. Wendy Lestell read the minutes of the last meeting. Kathy Utiger gave the Chairman's report. Highlights included the emphasis on adoptions made possible by the generous donation of Lee and Mary Parsons. Janina Little was hired to coordinate adoptions, which coincided with the euthanasia scare and increased requests for adoptions. Another important change was the increased interaction with our partners in the tortoise community to solve the many problems facing the tortoise. The Vision Committee is working to bring tortoise group to the next level. The bi-weekly meetings have been lively, so far drafting a mission, a vision, and goals. Members are Larry Acidillo, sorry, Larry Acidillo, Tina Bates, Laura Knight, Jeanette Magnus, George Steckel, and Kathy Utiger. The Treasurer's Report. Trilla reported that as of July 31st, income was 
$313.93, which was $5,042.90 more than the year before. Mega diet income was $20,043, $2,000 uh, more than the year before, while membership was about the same at $14,785. There being no old business or new business, the meeting was adjourned at 1.23 p.m. Respectfully submitted by Kathy Uger. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Now, Chairman's Report. Well, Jim has just given a lot of it, so this is going to be quick. The Tortoise Group has made some amazing leaps forward in this year. Since 23rd, October 2013, the Vision Committee completed the strategic plan which directed that we find an executive director. And, ta-da, Jim Cornell arrived in March to lead Tortoise Group at a time when we were presented with many new opportunities. And Jim has undertaken each of these with great enthusiasm. During the year, uh, Jim pointed out many of the things that we have gotten into. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife <clears throat> funded us to increase the range of adoptions to other parts of Nevada. And with some of that money, we were able to hire Janina for the other half time. So she's now working full time on adoptions for Doris Group. Does everyone know who you are, Janina? Stand up and circle around. And this, girl, this girl works her tail off, and I'll tell you, she is just fabulous. So we have adoptions in northern Nevada. We're spreading out to some other towns. Ooh, good popsicles. And um, the Fish and Wildlife asked us to do the sterilization clinic, which you heard about, but and you also heard that Liz Cornell is the person who coordinated that whole venture. We also have under them a, a hatchling fostering program. We have four habitats now with little, little tortoises in them. We have two brand new hatchling habitats. Charlene, are you here? No, okay. So we have a lot of people who've been involved in bringing tortoises in and holding tortoises, and uh, these tortoises will eventually be translocated into the desert. Those that we got in spring are going next week into the desert, so they got a little bit of a chance before they got out there. There are going to be 11 going out, and then we'll have room for 40. And uh, we have some folks who have said they would build another habitat. Anybody else who would want to foster if we needed to? The Browns have said they would. Okay. Jim was talking about increasing our media presence, and he told all the, all the places that we've been this year. But he's done a wonderful job with newspapers and radio. And um, maybe people are telling you, too, that, you're, that they're hearing more about us. We've expanded our mega diet sellers to 23 around Las Vegas. Some of those are businesses. And we have four new people in northern Nevada. You heard about, the, under the fundraising, you heard about the PetSmart charities. And we've just received an, another very generous donation from Lee and Mary Parsons. Um, it's about $20,000 last year and this year again, which is extremely generous, and that is what allows us to hire Janina. Now let me just step back for a sec and say, so we have Janina, and she's covered, but we have Jim, who's new, and we also have a bookkeeper that we've hired, so we have a lot of additional expenses to become this organization that's going in a new way. So I want you to keep that in mind when we're asking for your input and help. We also have been, been um, we've begun some fundraising and grant grant writing <coughs> activities and Dominique is the one who is spearheading this. She comes up with these fabulous ideas that we're going to be following and you'll be hearing a lot more from her. Membership has stayed about the same. As of yesterday we had 668 members. 
125 of whom are life members. The board has created a new membership plan that we're going to unveil in November, so just keep waiting. Oh, I know you're excited about that. Now, with adoptions, we have Janina, and you won't believe the statistics you're going to hear. Last year we adopted, was it 24 in Southern Nevada, or was it 25? 23. Way above the seven the previous year, and the two to three in previous years before that. So we went to two to three, and then seven, and then 23, that's when we hired Janina. Now this year we have 17 in Northern Nevada, I'm oh, guessing. 24. 24 in Northern Nevada? 28 local. 23 in Southern Nevada? 28 local. 28 local. 24 Northern. 24 Northern and maybe another 10 coming up. Oh. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Janina is working with people statewide and it's, wow, it's a challenge. Can you imagine the emails coming in from all these people? It's, it's really wild. So we've also developed a whole section on our website that refers just to cold weather climate, as you may have noticed. The board of directors is, is growing. We're seeking people who can help us make good business decisions as we move forward. We have seven members right now. And we're just going to create some bios that we'll put on the website so you'll see us there. So we've also just hired a bookkeeper. So there's another expense. But we were unable to find a volunteer treasurer. As you know, Trilla hung on for another couple of years while we were trying him. And we found a lovely lady, Marjorie Kirshner, who is uh, doing a wonderful job. Uh, we also pay our webmaster a pittance. And uh, we have our quarter time administrator who handles database. So we have a we have quite an organization that you may not see, but it's there behind this. We're also in the process of creating a, a chapter of Tortoise Group in Northern Nevada. So they will be an official chapter of Tortoise Group up there. And it's kind of a trip because they're all spread out along the range. But uh, they're excited about that. So Tortoise Group is now definitely a statewide organization. On the education front, We've had some outstanding fair booths, and a lot of you were involved in the couple of fairs that we had so far. Our hotline gives people the personal service they are so grateful to receive, and we hear all the time how people say, oh, thank you, oh, this was so great to really talk to somebody. And uh, that's one of our services that's very, that's quite unique, as opposed to very unique. And our website, people always tell us how great it is, and we keep saying, well, we need to revamp it, but, the, but all the information is there. Our school program really hasn't gotten along this year because we've had other priorities, but now we have Dominique, who's also an expert in that area and is just taking off. Now, I've left till last the volunteers, and as Jim said, we had such a wonderful turnout for the sterilization clinic. But I want to say that without these volunteers, none of these programs would be going. And I'm going to mention every volunteer part that I can think of, just so you'll know who we've got. We have the hotline, the mega diet sellers, all the people who staff the fair booths, the zillions of people that it takes to set up this and usually that's about 11 people. That was Kathy Gillespie, by the way, who donated the uh, office space to us. I'm sorry that she wasn't here for me to thank her. We have Susan, who does the online fulfillment all by herself. The enthusiastic people who come out for the mega diet bagging, the sterilization clinic, the folks who painted the office for Jim. The administrative help, like Diane, who comes in and, and helps with inputting in the database. The people who helped Jim move into his house, like Curtis, that man can, oh, if you ever need a mover, right there, there he is right there. 
the adoption team, the Hatchling Foster Care, Borough Builders, the Board of Directors, and the staff who also donate tons of time. So let's just give everybody a really good <laughs> a year and I was talking with Larry Acevedo this morning and he said what a transformation this year and I, I have to agree with that and I will now call on the treasurer who isn't here so in lieu of the treasurer I will give the treasurer's report so I noted that she only told you about income so this year for income we have had depending upon how you count it $88,000 about 20 of that is mega diet, 18 for membership. We have some adoption income. We have the PetSmart and Lee Parsons donations. And we have quite a, a 14,000 about that came in from the Northern Nevada project. And how much do we have currently? 45 or, and it's gonna be so more. So we have funding that we haven't put in for yet. So this, our, and our fiscal year ends this month. So we're, we're close to the end. Um, we bought uh, $5,000 worth of mega diet and $3,000 worth of t-shirts. And we spent $90,000. So we have a lot of expenses too for for goods, for our database, for advertising, for printing, for newsletters, for mailing, all of the things. We're, we're about even, I'm not, I can't see how, but, but we are on paper, but that's not going to last for long. So we ask you again to um, be charitable. I, and I forgot, uh, uh, so, sorry, remind me about the t-shirts. That is the Treasury's report. Are there any questions on that? Because I actually have this here. We will have a, an accounting and a, an annual report online for you. Yes? So we need donations, correct? Big time. So get your money out. Let's buy this candy boys and girls because this is really going to put money in our pockets. Thank you, Linda. While we're saying that, the brown t-shirts are on sale for $8, small ladies sizes only, I think. Is that correct? OK. Anything else on the treasurer? No? Any old business? Any new business? Meeting <laughs> Now, we're getting there. This is pretty good, considering how we started. Guess who? Yeah. <laughs> With his mouth open. OK, let's talk about fall behavior. Be sure to be passing those around, those for sign-ups, please. Also, we have seeds up here. You can pick up these seeds if you want. They're kind of leftovers from the season. Let's look at the changes in behavior from last month. Boy, is my tortoise getting into trouble. It's never been like this. I don't know what it is. I found him on his back, on the cement. Never before in 30 years, I was terrified. I went out to the prison and We've just adopted another tortoise to the women's prison. And as I was arriving with this new tortoise, this inmate went flying by and she said, Ruby's on her back. And she went tearing over there. So we had firsthand what to do when your tortoise is on its back, which is turn it over, put it in the shade, and hose it off with cool water. You gotta wait for the hot water to get out of the hose. It can be foaming at the mouth, and they should just, you know, tortoises are incredible. They will recuperate probably quite easily. So um, 
they, they just seem to be getting into trouble right now. So we've gone all through the backyard and tried to find every place where he could climb up and get into and flip over. It's almost impossible if you have anything, because a tortoise can get in anywhere. So, so keep that in mind. They're pacing. Mine's still browsing like crazy, wanting to eat, although he doesn't seem as ravenous as he does sometimes. Are you finding that too? Yeah. So they're, no, huh? <laughs> No, well, well, there are some, aren't there, who eat like crazy all year. But they should be doing their fall behavior, which is digging, maybe wanting to come in more, knocking on the door, being insistent, I don't know whether you let him in, but I do. I let him in, and he walks around, but I don't let him stay. And pretty much, he, he doesn't want to stay yet. But I know maybe in another month he will. I notice that he's coming out. He's sitting at the front of his burrow, sleeping now. And then about maybe 8.30 or 9, he's coming out, not 6.30 anymore. So I noticed that the average temperature yesterday was 86. Now last, um, was it 97 last month, the average temperature, so there's been a big change. The dirt is cooling off, the burrow is cooler, and it's just going to continue that way. They're going to bask more, come out less, eat less, just the opposite from spring. So I already talked about that. Cactus pears can be a treat. You know those purpley things. Some of, some of them are green, I guess, but a lot of them are purple. They're, they're slightly sweet. My tortoise won't eat them. But um, I've sliced them open, and you can offer that to a tortoise as a treat now and then. I wanted to point out this in case I don't think I've mentioned it. Dr. Christopher Smith at Animal Emergency Hospital on West Charleston will care for your eye problems only, free. He's a veterinary ophthalmologist, and he's offered to do this free now. Pebbles from the prison is going on Monday to see Dr. Smith, and it took us almost a week to get in to see him. He's that busy. And, and I want to talk about this, the knowing about our care sheets. You know, we have this huge long list of care sheets on our website, and I encourage people to go and see what's there. I don't care if you read them all, but just know what's there. A lady called me this week about 7.30 at night, and she said she was so worried about her tortoise because the burrow had flooded, his nose had been stuck in the mud. They brought him out, and she followed the advice that was in our newsletter about the tortoise from Peru. So she had him on a slant. She had a hot water bottle on him. And I said, well, did you read our care sheet on what to do for a drowning tortoise? She said, oh, I didn't know we had one. Well, then we went through that, and they tried mouth-to-nose resuscitation and the other things that were described on there, and unfortunately, the tortoise didn't <coughs> survive. But had she known, also had she called me in the morning instead of at night, things might have been different, but I want to urge you to see what's there. Marking your tortoise, poisonous plants, different kinds of burrows, goes on and on and on. So when you're thinking, oh gosh, I wish I knew about that, maybe it's right there for you to check. So take a moment and look sometime, if you would, please. Sometimes it can be life-saving. Now, why do tortoises brumate? This is the season. Well, it's their adaptation to the cold. They have to be about 85 degrees in order to function in order to digest, to get out, to find a mate, and so on. And when they can't raise their body bodies to that temperature, something 